This multi-million dollar armed class of hovercraft is called the Juber. The Russian mega machine comes equipped with Gatling guns, tanks, and a whole lot more. We'll give you the full tour. Juber is the world's largest class of hovercraft. Evgeny Kucheskov is one of Russia's two Juber Bison class hovercraft. Built in 1991, the vehicles are designed to carry a large number of Marines on short distance amphibious raids. Kocheshkov and its sister ship, Mordovia, weigh 115 tons with a normal load, have a crew of 33, and can carry up to 10 BTR 82A APCs, three main battle tanks, 360 Marines, or some combination of all three. Jubers can also act as mine layers by storing sea mines in their cargo holds and dumping them at sea. Each Juber is powered by five gas turbine engines, each generating 12,100 shaft horsepower. Two of the gas turbines drive blowers to maintain skirt pressure that keep the hovercraft floating on a bed of trapped air, while three of the turbines are mounted on enormous pylons at the stern. With a sustained speed of 63 miles per hour, the craft can travel up to 300 miles, while Russia, China, and the United States all built military hovercraft, only Russia's are armed. North Korea has operated armed hovercraft in the past, but it is unknown whether or not they are still active. Each Juber is armed with two FASTA 4M surface-to-air missile launchers. Each launcher carries 16 IGLA-M missiles, roughly equivalent to the American soldier-fired Stinger missile. Additionally, they are armed with two AK-630M Gatling guns, each equipped with six 30mm barrels. Each also has two 140mm rocket launchers with 22 rounds for suppressing beach defense. The Ministry of Defense of Moscow released video showing troops from Kaliningrad conducting an amphibious exercise off the country's Baltic coast. Off the beach, one of Russia's two Jubers unloads Marines and armored vehicles. Juber-class hovercraft are likely the only armed hovercraft in the world. On July 21st, troops in Kaliningrad, Russia, participated in a snap drill, landing Marines of the 336 Independent Guards Bialystok Naval Infantry Brigade and their instrument from the landing ship Kaliningrad and the hovercraft Evgeny Kocheshkov were involved. This video shows the hovercraft running up on the beach and then lowering its bow ramp. Several dozen Russian Marines follow their BTR-82A armor personal carriers off the vehicle. 82mm motors are set up by the Marines for fire support as the armor personnel, carriers and infantry drive inland. In June 2017, Russia announced the restart of Juber-class craft production. After this, representatives of the Russian shipbuilding industry responded by saying production could not resume in 2018 and would only be possible by 2019 or 2021. Main obstacles, according to representatives, are the lack of availability of the inability to mass-produce components such as gas turbine engines and reduction gears. Aside from Russia, China and Greece also operate the Juber hovercraft. The Chinese Navy operated four boats at a reported cost of $315 million. A second pair of vessels will be built in China by Ukrainian technicians under the supervision of Feodosiev Shipbuilding Company. Juber-class LCACs are air-conditioned landing craft of Ukrainian design. It wasn't so long ago that Ukrainian nationalized the Medazi company, costing Chinese companies $2.5 billion US. Ukraine had a lot of military cooperation with them in the past. However, after the conflict in Ukraine, the country fell to the West 
and Medazic's cooperation with the U.S. also ended under the American intervention. In terms of size, this class of military hovercraft is the largest on the planet. Landing assault units can be transported from equipped or unequipped vehicles. The Zubers could be used to reinforce China's islands in the South China Sea or seas lands in the East China Sea and may even lead to the invasion of Taiwan. Theodosia Shipping Company built China's first Zuber LCAC. With no military weapons and no electrical systems, in 2011, a construction accident badly damaged the first four LCACs built for China. In 2013, a cargo ship named HHL New York carried a Zuber-class LCAC hovercraft for the Chinese Navy on the Zhujiang River in Guangzhou, the capital of South China's Guangzhou province. There, it received the air-cushioned landing craft Zuber class LCAC built for the Chinese Navy after a month-long sea journey. In 2014, Ukraine handed over to China the second Zuber class air-cushioned landing craft. Each Zuber class LCAC cost China an estimated $80 million. China had already taken delivery of the first LCAC in 2013. As of early 2014, images showed that at least two Zubers were ready for service and would be soon joining the Chinese Navy. By the time the first imported bison appeared along with the completion of the first building in China and the arrival of a second imported ship, it was already an embryonic unit. This $350 million warship building contract could be affected by the situation around Crimea, a source in the Ukraine defense sector told Interfax in 2014. As a result of the events in Crimea, the implementation of the contract for the construction of small landing craft for China remains uncertain. Greece's hovercraft proved useful when navigating the Aegean Sea's hundreds of islands, especially when keeping rival Turkey military forces off balance. So yeah, China is not the first buyer of an air cushion landing craft of the Bison class. Greece had previously purchased four landing craft of this type from Ukraine. According to public data, this cost Greece upwards of $50 million. The ship's price has now reached $80 million and the premium is quite obvious. However, after purchasing these hovercraft, Greece seemed to regret the purchase. This equipment is difficult to maintain. Most of the equipment used in Greece is NATO equipment, and the hovercraft, European Bison, is a Soviet product. The UGT-6000 gas turbine prototype is the NK-12 turboprop engine on the TU-95 bomber. That's a lot of numbers and letters, but basically, it's notoriously difficult to maintain. As a result, the Greek Navy possesses only European Bison-class hovercrafts. The ship's shipboard armaments include an AK-630 near anti-cannon, a 104mm multiple rocket launcher, and a MTU-2 short-range air defense missile. In compatibility with the shipborne weapons of the Greek Navy, these weapons are very difficult to maintain as well. The U.S. Navy operates several dozen landing craft, air cushions, smaller, shorter range landing craft designed for ferrying troops, vehicles, and supplies from amphibious landing ships to shore. The LCAC can even transport M1A1 main battle tanks. In the near future, the new ship-to-shore connector will replace the unarmed vehicles. Zuber, while unique, probably won't last very long. The original boats were delivered in 1991 and were only meant to last 16 years. The world's largest civil hovercraft is the SRN4 type. Propulsion is provided by four Rolls-Royce Proteus Marine turboshaft engines, each with its own lift fan and pylon mounted steerable propeller. SRN4 was the largest hovercraft van ever built, featuring two cabins for 254 passengers and a four-lane automotive bay for 30 vehicles. It was 131 feet long, weighed 193 tons, and had a top speed of 83 knots or 95 miles per hour and a cruise speed of 60 knots, that's 69 miles per hour. SRN4s operated regular service across the English Channel from 1968 to 2000. Following operator requests, stretch versions of the SRN4 were developed. 
culminating in the MK3 variant and could carry almost twice as many cars and passengers as the MK1. Although the type was considered for military use, no vehicles were deployed. They are now mostly decommissioned, but you can still see them in a museum. Essentially, they just weren't cost effective. For the amount of fuel they take and the maintenance costs, combined with a lack of common comforts to the mode of travel, it just wasn't a feasible method of transportation in a majority of instances. If you're interested, the cost for a recreational hovercraft can be available as low as $19,500 and up to $36,000 with options. Rescue hovercraft can range from $28,000 to $79,000 and commercial hovercraft from $36,000 to $90,000. Trailers range from $3,000 to $12,600. Air cushion vehicles of the BHT series are extremely versatile and can perform a wide range of operational functions. They are intended to withstand heavy use on a daily basis. Based on British hovercraft technology, the Ranger vehicles are available in two versions, full well tech and half well tech. Besides carrying passengers and freight weighing up to 22 and a half tons, this ship can operate in a sea condition of up to two meters and considerable waves. This ship can also operate in inland waters. Four diesel engines provide both lift and push providing a great deal of power in case of an emergency. The SRN6 hovercraft, also known as the Winchester class, was a larger version of the SRN5 series hovercraft from the former Sounders Row and later the British Hovercraft Corporation. The SRN6 is a medium-sized hovercraft that is designed specifically for passenger transportation. Original models of the type could accommodate up to 38 passengers, which was more than the maximum of 18 passengers these smaller SRN5 models could accommodate. SRN6 was later expanded to accommodate an additional 20 passengers, bringing the total to 58 seats. As a military configuration, the SRN6 became the first hovercraft capable of transporting a full coach load of passengers. SRN6 can carry up to 55 fully equipped troops or 6 tons of equipment. An English company, Griffin Hoverwork, developed the Griffin 8000 TD series of hovercrafts. Known as the most popular medium lift hovercraft, the Griffin 8000 TD is a well proven design. Its military version, the 8000 TDM, is powered by two water cooled diesel engines with a combined power of 596 kilowatts and 800 horsepower. The 8000 TD cruises at 40 knots with a full payload in zero wind, zero wave conditions. This high speed amphibious vessel can carry 50 to 65 passengers and their luggage in airline style seats in its commercial role. The Pac V hovercraft was a United States Navy and Army hovercraft used in Vietnam as a patrol boat in marshy and riverline areas. The Pac V was developed to operate in these shallow waters common in South Vietnam, including the Macon Delta and reed fields. The Pac V's usually high speeds of 60 knots or 69 miles per hour made it more vulnerable than other watercraft during the conflict, however. It had major drawbacks, including a cost of $1 million and unreliability. The hovercraft's fees were deemed unsuccessful in Vietnam and were withdrawn in 1970. The LCAC hovercraft is used by the US Navy and replaced the LCM8 landing boats. There are several ways in which the LCACs outperform LCM8 type of boats, including maximum load capacity, speed and displacement. It can reach speeds of 40 knots or 47 miles per hour, making it a valuable and rapid means of transportation. Moreover, the hovercraft can land on 70% of the world's coastlines. LCAC-100, an upgraded version of the LCAC, was recently established in the United States. The boat's 100th edition will be equipped with two engines rather than four, resulting in greater driving performance and cargo capacity. The Landing Craft Air Cushion, or LCAC, is an over-the-beach, fully amphibious landing craft capable of carrying 60 to 75 tons of payload. The Marine Air Ground Task Force uses it to transport weapon systems, equipment, cargo, and personnel from ship to shore and across the beach. 
heavy payloads such as an M1 tank can be carried by LCAC at high speeds. By combining the speed and payload capabilities of the LCAC, the marine ground element can reach the shore more quickly. The concept of the current LCAC was developed back in the early 1970s with a full-scale amphibious assault landing craft test vehicle. Two prototypes were built during the advanced development stage. Jeff A was developed by Aerojet General in California. Jeff B was designed and manufactured by Bell Aerospace in New Orleans, Louisiana. I can't tell you why they were called Jeff, but uh, we'll go with it. LCAC was only developed after these two craft named Jeff proved their technical feasibility and operational capability. It seems that Jeff B did win in the end, however, LCAC's design is based on Jeff B. LCACs were first delivered to the Navy in 1994, and initial operational capability was achieved in 1996. Full production began the year later. Air cushioned boats such as the Hyvis 48 can transport passengers and goods year round on interior rivers and in coastal locations where vessel traffic is permitted. It can be used on non navigable waterways, shallow water, icy and snowy places, and at wave heights of up to 2.5 meters and wind speeds of up to 15 meters. This vessel can be used if its height deviations do not exceed 0.8 meters and its inclination angle does not exceed 6 degrees. The hive's working temperature range is negative 35 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. There are 48 seats within the hive. If it needs to carry a heavy load, the seats can be modified to make more space. The Tondar hovercraft was developed in Iran. Both variants of this vessel are used by the Islamic Republic of Iran Navy for combat and transit operations. The Islamic Republic of Iran Navy uses this vessel for combat and transit operations. General Ahmed Mahidi revealed the hovercraft at a ceremony in November 2012. The Tandar hovercraft can be deployed with a variety of weapons, including rocket launchers and machine guns. It can also be equipped with unmanned aerial vehicles. As a command vessel, the Tandar can conduct coastal patrols and offensive reconnaissance missions as a means of logistical support for the islands and coastal areas or a means of relief in rescue missions. When it comes to traveling the ocean seas in luxury and style, we'd say you're better off with a yacht. But if you want to traverse water, sand, and earth while striking fear in the hearts of your enemies, well, maybe hovercraft is the way to go.